Hey everyone out there, it's Martin Miller here and today I'm really excited to bring you five styles of rhythm guitar that work over the chord progression of Little Wing. So today I want to try something a little bit different. I've done these kind of more produced lessons before, but they've all been based around pre-existing performances and analyzing those. But this is the first time I've actually gone and made up a bunch of studies specifically for this video. So what you find here is a series of etudes, if you will, that examine certain harmonic and technical devices in various styles over the same bass chord progression, which is the chord progression of Little Wing. And of course, my good buddy Levi Clay provided the free tablature for you guys, which is awesome. So you can sink your teeth into that along with the demonstrations that I'll be giving and the commentary and analysis that I'm providing for these very examples. And of course, this lesson comes with a free tablature that contains transcriptions for all the examples played in this video. You can find it on my website. The link is in the description. It's completely free, of course, but there is a little pay what you want system built in that allows you to leave a little tip or donation should you so desire. If you want to support me further, you can support me financially by going to my Patreon site or my GoFundMe campaign. Both are listed in the description. Any kind of help both emotionally or financially is greatly appreciated, guys. But now let's get started with the first of five stylistic studies of rhythm guitar over Little Wing. Enjoy, guys and girls. This one is guaranteed to gain you 10,000 followers on Instagram. This one has all the R&B and neo soul cliches in it. Let's see what it sounds like. We start off with E minor seven, using a ton of hammer-ons, of course. Go to D major uh, with a third in the bass and to G major. Once again, some hammer-ons. Then we get some open strings. Then some double stops with a slide. And some hammer-on pull-off flourishes. That leads us to the A minor seven bit. So you go from G major into A minor seven, which is really a C major triad over an A bass. Another G major triad, another A minor triad, and then you have the typical flourishes with hammer-ons and pull-offs. That leads you to E minor. And here comes a cool bit where you have a ton of double stops that also incorporate hammer-ons and pull-offs. So it goes something like this. I'm gonna play it slow for you. Something like that. Yeah, very cool sound. Let's move on. We got the B minor bit. And this one is inspired by jazz and blues organ players. What they do is they have well, it's a very typical cliche for them. They have a note on top ringing out and they play a melodic line under it. And that's really what I'm doing here. I'm holding out that B note on top and I'm playing this blues line underneath. But instead of playing it like this, I keep that note ringing out on top. So it sounds like this. One more time. Yeah, makes it sound so much cooler, so much more interesting and very un -guitar-y. So that is a really cool trick that you can incorporate. Let's move on to A minor going to C major. And here comes another Instagram cliche, where you have a root position, open position, C major triad, but you hammer on from the second to the third degree and continue a line on top on the E string. Then you grab the root position closed voice triad up here and continue in a similar fashion with adding this melody on top. So this whole thing goes, yeah, very cool. Then you resolve to G major. And here comes a bit that I stole from Mark Lettieri, I believe. It goes something like this, G major. And then you employ some triads on top of that. F major, same deal. 
Yeah, it's very cool. Let's hear it in context one more time. Resolve to C, continue the melodic motif. And here's the ending. Actually got a scroll here. Of course we end up with some hammer-ons and pull-offs, flourishes. And that concludes the R&B example. I hope you enjoyed that one. The example you just heard is called voice leading and I call it voice leading because I essentially pick chords in a very deliberate way uh, and voice leading specifically refers to the way you move from one chord to the next. So let me just have a look at the first set of chords here. We start out with E minor but it's kind of a strange E minor if you've never played it like this. It looks like like this. Yeah, please refer to the transcription for that. This is what we call an open voice triad. In this case it's a minor triad in the second inversion because it has the fifth in the bottom. It's called open voice because the notes are spread out over a large distance as opposed to a closed voice triad which would be this. Yeah, but this one sounds a bit more dramatic if you will. And I go to the next chord which is G major very deliberately. I actually insert a little D major chord to lead us there which is this. Very similar shape. And then we end up with the first inversion. G major open position triad. Now if you examine the chord we started with, which is this, and the chord we ended up on, we resolve to is what it's called, you'll notice that there's only one note difference here. Yeah. So it's a very efficient way of going from one chord to the next. It's not like this going to this. Yeah, it's very deliberate. The notes are chosen very carefully because this note stays, this note stays, and this one note moves down one step and that gives you, in my opinion, a very pleasing sound. So that's the first bit of this example. I also want to mention really quickly the comping style that I use. I got kind of inspired by the piano a little bit, how piano players accompany songs where they have uh, a chord in the right hand and a bass note in the left hand and they keep going at different rhythms to create a sonic landscape. So in this case, I got the bass and the chords going against each other a little bit. Here they come together. So sometimes they drift away from each other and sometimes they meet, but I treat the chords and the bass note as kind of two independent instruments to create a bit more of a complex layer than if you were to just use block chords like and instead you go. And then in order to make this thing even less predictable, I tend to insert little counter melodies such as this in the second bar. And I do so by inserting a little open string here that facilitates uh, the position shift to the next chord. There I end up on A minor, which is voiced root, fifth, minor, third, once again very widely spaced triad and I conclude the bar with a continuation of that same melodic motif which goes like this. This time with the open G string and we end up on E minor, first inversion, some transitional chords and we resolve to B minor. Um, B minor then moves down using a tritone substitute of B flat 7. If you don't know what a tritone substitute is, don't worry about it. This is kind of not the point of this lesson, but we resolve to A minor 7. And then in this bar, you have four chords per bar. In each quarter note, we have A minor 7, then A minor first position, uh, sorry, first inversion, open position. 
then the chord progression moves to C major and we end up on the first inversion open position. C major chord. And then I add a little reharmonization. I add a D7 chord and dominant chords have the tendency to resolve up a fourth or down a fifth. In this case, that would be G major. So I make use of the ten natural tendency of the dominant chord to resolve back to G major here in the second inversion. Go down the inversions, add a little melody, then move to the same inversion of F major. There I play this little melody um, within the chord and I resolve to C major. And I grab the pick and I play the next chord, which is this. It's essentially the same shape as the C, ma as the C major chord, moved up two steps, and then with an added fifth in the bottom, which is a very Tim Miller thing that I did here. And I play the open G string, which turns the chord into a D major chord um, with an added 11. So that's a very cool, more colorful sound than if it just were D major. So I arpeggiate that a little bit. Now let me scroll down here. And the whole thing concludes with this little cascading melody. It goes something like this. Where you want to have as many of the notes ring into each other and you resolve to E minor. Once again, white position, open position. Try it this time in the root position of E minor and I finish up with a low E string. And that is the voice leading example of rhythm guitar for Little Wing. Before we move on, I just want to take a brief moment to talk about the sponsor of this video. And the sponsor of this video is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community platform where basically millions of creatives get together and exchange knowledge and creativity with each other. One of the coolest things about Skillshare is that it offers thousands upon thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. And the topics include illustration, design, photography, videography, freelancing, marketing, and so much more. I want to just really briefly tell you how I've been using their platform as of late. So as you can see, there's a piano behind me. And the reason is that I really want to be using the piano as a tool for composition. And Skillshare actually offered the perfect course for me that accomplishes just that. It's called Music Composition with Piano and it's by this fellow named Jack Vaughn. The course is very profound. It's logically structured and beautifully presented. So Music Composition for Piano is definitely something I recommend. Skillshare is completely ad free. They keep adding premium courses on a regular basis. Basis, and you can get a monthly subscription for as little as 10 US dollars. The first thousand people who click the link in the video description and go to Skillshare will get a free trial premium membership. So check it out guys, Skillshare. Right, it is time to rock. Here's the rock example, um, the by far heaviest example in here. Uses a lot of rock cliches, a lot of it which you will find in my Little Wing cover, which was of course largely spontaneous, but I kind of utilized some of the ideas that are in it within this example. Let's just read through it and I'll provide some commentary of what is going on. We start with the trusted open E chord, E power chord. Yeah, there's no third here, I actually mute the G string with my first finger so I can really punch into the chord without that string ringing out. Moves to the open G power chord, and then I added this little line here. I think that is from the little wing cover for sure. Make sure you play that with a lot of power. Now that moves to A which I fret with my thumb on the low E string. And I have this little double stop on the D and G strings and I actually continue with double stops as I tuck my pick away between my hand and my first finger. And play this set of double stops that is only interrupted by the open A string. It's a little counter melody, which I like to add in order to make 
the rhythm guitars a little more interesting. And by the way, in general, let me tell you, these examples are stuffed with ideas. In general, the density of ideas here is very high and it's probably too high for most real world scenarios. So your band members are actually gonna hate you if you cram all these ideas into your playing. So think of this as a library of ideas that you can draw from, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. So be very mindful how you use this stuff. Now, moving on. We end up with another E power chord and a little lick using the open E string and some slides on the B string. Yeah, something like this, very hard to keep the high E string ringing. Be mindful of very careful fretting. Then we go to B minor seven, fret it with a thumb one more time. It's kind of a blues thing with double stops and bent double stops. Moving down to A minor. And I love incorporating ninths uh, when you play with distortion into open chords because it, it makes the distortion ring out so nicely. Ah, such an enjoyable sound. Uh, you end up with the two open strings, D and G. And there's this, you know, there's this famous motif. And I actually match that motif using octaves. And I answer with this little arpeggiated sus2 chord. Move down to the C power chord. And yet, there's another famous motif in here. We resolve to a D sus chord. A little embellishment, and we end up on the open power chord D and conclude with a little country ish open string lick. And that is the rock version of rhythm guitar for Little Wing. Okay, let's have a look at the folk picking example. This one is inspired by guitarists such as James Taylor, but also by Beatles songs, etc. Let's have a look what this is. This one starts off with this little melody using a slide and an open string. Yeah, and then it resolves to E minor, but a very flashy E minor, as you can tell. It has a few notes in it that are not common in E minor, such as the ninth and the flat seven. And it's a chord I like to use very often. It spices up the, the color of the chord, if you will. The first thing you wanna practice is the picking pattern, which is actually quite elaborate. It splices up the chords into three parts, the lowest string, the middle string here, and then the top part with the two notes being finger picked. And I suggest you just do that over and over until you get comfortable with it. And in context, it'll sound something like this. Insert a little D major over F sharp, and we end up with G major. And here I employ different chords over the pedal tone G bass. That just means we keep the note G and we change different chords on top of it. So it starts off with a regular G major, C major over G, and D major at 11th over G. And then I add a little bit of a reharmonization, which is a G sharp diminished chord, which is really a stand in for an E7 flat nine leading to A minor seven. Secondary dominant chord, nobody cares. It's not important to know this. You can just play it and that resolves into an A minor seven chord, standard affair. But as you can see, there's a little sixth within this chord and I move that up a whole step, but I retain the open A and open G string, which gives it a very cool sound. I move that to A minor seven and to D major over the A bass. And then there comes a really cool bit, which is an E minor cascading line where fretted notes and open strings meld into each other. It sounds something like this. Yeah, and maybe finger picking it in the original, I'm not sure. And that resolves to B minor using some open strings. 
which incorporates a flat six. Sounds very melancholic. I love that sound. And goes into this kind of Gilmore-ish lick using sixes, very bluesy. Resolve with an open string and go to A minor seven. This is possibly my favorite bit. It's essentially a harmonized melody where you accompany yourself. Sounds complicated. Let me just play it for you. Yeah, this is what's really going on. Um, you have this melody on top, which you really have to work out in the way you accent it in your playing, but you accompany yourself at the same time and you harmonize it with sixes too. So the whole thing sounds like. And then we go into this little tribute to the Beatles, which is really a Blackbird ripoff, but applied over Little Wing. And then we have this arpeggiated D7 sus4 chord. Resulting in these double stops, leading you down to D7 and resolving to E minor. And that is the folk picking example. start with a percussive groove. This one is inspired by groove-based electric guitar players such as uh, Mark Lettieri, Ben Lacey, although a very simplified version of that because it's not really my specialty but I'm dabbling uh, and I love to play like this. We're especially going to be examining some of the right hand techniques here because they might be a little bit unorthodox if you're not used to playing that kind of style. So let's see how this one starts. It starts with this little pickup phrase in the bass. And you're essentially covering the role of the bass, the drums, and the piano at the same time. So bass, drums, and now let's add the piano chords on top. It has a lot of responsibility on your shoulders because you gotta maintain this throughout, otherwise the groove suffers. And that is the worst thing that can happen in groove-based music. So one thing you need to figure out is how to play a chord and a slap at the same time. And I use a kind of flicking technique to make that happen. So if I happen to have a slap and a chord coincide at the same time, I kind of do this with my right hand where I flick and hit the strings at the same time, such as here. I suggest you break down even parts of a bar, just two counts at a time, and really get the coordination of the right hand going. And learn to maintain that groove. Yeah, leaves us here. Let's move on with the second bar. Here I have some double stops, with some chromatic passing tones, a slap, and then an arpeggiated triad. That leads us to A minor, another slap on a chord, and some double stops using hammer-ons and pull-offs. It's kind of a cool trick. It's kind of an unusual sound too, I love that. Here I added a little chromatic bass line. And the way I execute the bass lines is I alternate between my thumb and my middle finger. So essentially the thumb is the downstroke and the middle finger is the upstroke. Once again, I recommend isolating that and maintaining the back beat. That brings us to B minor seven. This is kind of, this is kind of a little harder than it sounds. You have to maintain this, this uh, descending pentatonic harmonized pattern, but at the same time incorporate the slap. So. Yeah, can feel very unusual, very unorthodox. Moving on, A minor seven. 
little line there, played with the alternating thumb and middle finger once again. And in case you haven't noticed it yet, I'm tucking away the pick with my first finger and I'm using these three fingers plus the thumb to execute all this. And that leads us to the final stretch of this example. This is the part that goes G major, F major, C major, D major. Let's have a look what's happening here. It's kind of a John Mayer-ish thing here. He has a lot going on here. We have two notes in the bass, a slap on top while executing the chord, actually twice, a downstroke with the middle finger and an upstroke with the middle finger, then a pull off and an open string picked with the middle finger, all done with the middle finger. Yeah, it's kind of difficult. Same thing, a step lower and then some open chords with the slaps in between, which is very important for the groove. And finally, we got this little double stop cliche that is really part of the original, except it's got a slap in it, right there. And then you have this little percussive bit with some ghost notes in between that is essentially just ascending inversions of D major triads, close voice and resolving to this cool voicing of an E minor 7-9 chord. And that is the percussive groove. And that is it for today, guys and girls. Thank you so much for checking out this lesson. Let me know in the comments whether you liked it or not, what other kinds of topics you'd want me to cover, or what other kinds of formats you'd like to see on this channel. Of course, you can get the free tab in the description. Just follow that link. Also check out Patreon, GoFundMe, and of course, Skillshare, our generous sponsor. They brought this video to you. Thanks so much, guys. Don't forget to do all the youtube -y things such as liking and subscribing and sharing on your social media and all that good stuff. And until the next video, I say bye-bye and take care.